Welcome to Robotics and Automation News Webinars, where you can be part of a global event without leaving your home or office. Attend our live webinars and communicate directly with influential professionals in your industry. Hello, my name is Abdul Montekim. I'm editor of roboticsandautomationnews.com. In this interview, I meet Ed Brown, president of Topper Industrial, a manufacturer of custom-built material handling equipment in the U.S. Among its main products are industrial carts and powered conveyors, which can be found in many automotive and agricultural companies, and even companies in the space sector, moving rockets around and things like that. Topper is a family-owned business, which Ed founded in the mid-1990s. Today, Ed, his wife, and their five children all work for the company, along with around 100 other employees. My name is Ed Brown. I am the founder and CEO of Copper Industrial. Copper Industrial is a um, manu designer and manufacturer of material handling equipment. Uh, about 90% of our sales revolve around building industrial delivery carts that deliver uh, product, replenish parts, to assembly lines. A lot of carts are used for delivery to, to a work cell where there's not necessarily an assembly line, but majority is definitely a uh, assembly line. Well, I find it quite interesting that uh, a company like yours even exists in the sense that there's so much manufacturing going to other countries. Um, so many things are manufactured overseas. How have you coped with it? I mean, you're probably quite a long established company as well. I think you probably mentioned, I may, I may have missed it, but uh, yeah, how does that, um, how does that affect you, this overseas uh, competition and, and things? Like that, uh, really, uh, not overseas competition um, is not really a concern to me. It's one of the few things I don't worry about. Um, our company started out uh, doing cart design and delivery for local companies, say within maybe a hundred, two, three hundred miles of of our facility near Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But as we started doing projects for local companies. Uh, those companies had multiple branches all over actually the world. Um, we do quite a bit of work in Mexico and Canada and we regularly ship product to Europe uh, and that um, but by far uh, majority of our sales is uh, for local manufacturing in the United States proper uh, but I have to be admit a fair amount does go to Canada and Mexico. So with that is an excellent. And what is what is what are the challenges, perhaps, uh, or even the uh, you know possible um, growth prospects for you going forward um, with for your business? Um, our growth aspects are are pretty good. Uh, our company has grown uh, since I started uh, twenty years ago, twenty two years ago. We're up to about a hundred people now, and our customer base has grown uh, as nicely. Um, we started out building carts for automotive to help with the productivity and the flexibility and the safety uh, delivering product to an assembly line over a fork truck. Well, the automotive thing was tip of the iceberg because today, um, whether it's agricultural, medical, uh, uh, Aerospace. Uh, we build carts for virtually every industry that I that I can think of. Uh, we recently built some carts for rocket boosters for um, uh, a company called uh, I don't know if it's allowed to say it, but um, that uh, replaced NASA. We're actually sending uh, uh, we're boosting rockets to the to circle the Earth and set up satellites and we do probably five of those a year. So um, it's, it's, it's a very diverse business. And it's, it's not, in the beginning, you don't realize how, uh, how, how valuable a cart can be for delivering virtually anything. That's really interesting, but by and large, uh, probably best not to mention the company's name. If you're not sure, just leave uh, it uh, as uh, a company. 
in this sector, you know, without naming it. So that's Fair probably enough. the best policy. But that is yes, very sir. interesting that you, uh, you know, they serve a diverse range of industries, sectors, and companies. And I, yeah, it's new business to me, new subject to me. And it's uh, kind of interesting to think about different uh, companies and sectors needing different kinds of carts and different specifications. Can you sort of give it, give, me, give us an example or a few examples of the types of, the differences between industries? I mean, what what kind of carts uh, there are that you've been asked to build? Is it, are they custom built or is it a sort of a modular system that you use to supply different uh, sectors? How, how do you approach the whole design and customization and specifications uh, uh, aspect? You know, th that's an interesting thing you'd ask because most companies do not realize how flexible and easy a cart delivery system is and that I've yet to see, um, I've yet to see a product that we couldn't convert to cart delivery. We recently did a project for a, uh, a, a large valve manufacturing company in Texas where the valves were never fit finally assembled were 40,000 pounds. And yes, that valve is built on a cart from the moment it starts to the moment it finishes. What's interesting about that particular application is it's a valve that, get, that used to be moved 12 times with a fork truck from workstation to workstation. It's now built on a cart and it's only lifted twice from the time they load it to the time they take it off. But um, the carts in general are pretty much the same, but they're custom to each customer's application. Most carts will be a four or six wheel design. However, when you're presenting parts to an assembly line on a cart, you want to make them as ergonomic and as easy for the operator to use. So some carts will tilt, some carts will rotate, some carts will lift, or a combination of all. But um, the design, it really comes down to the customer's product. Um, our, our biggest uh, challenge is usually weight, not size, not that size can't be, because uh, if you can get it down the aisle with a fork truck, you can get it down the aisle with a cart. So we worry more about weight in that. These carts have to be pushed by human beings uh, from the delivery cart or delivery uh, uh, tugger to the assembly line, even though it may be only 10 or 15 feet, they still gotta be able to push them easy. And uh, so that's why weight is a concern, but the design is really revolves around the customer's product and uh, what parts go on that cart. Um, so you, you, this, uh, some of them are pushed by humans. Uh, I see an illustration on the uh, on your website that um, there's a sort of a vehicle being driven by a human that's um, pulling along cart components, as it's called. And then further along in the diagram, similar things happening. What kind of a vehicle is that usually? And, and uh, are there other, other types of vehicles that your carts are pulled by? What are the types of vehicles that your carts are pulled along by? Well, in the beginning, when cart delivery became, just came into existence over the last 20 years, uh, many uh, tugger manufacturers have address that and there are many good manufacturers building tuggers that pull carts for cart delivery and some are sit up some are some are stand up um, recently in the last few years we started to do a lot of automatic guided vehicle delivery and that's not a big part of the business that's usually a, a fairly large company with very large volumes that could that because there's a lot of additional costs they have an automatic guided vehicle with uh, carts that are uh, will have the same feature on them. But 99% of cart delivery is uh, a, a human being will operate and pull the cart from the supermarket or the loading zone to the assembly line. And the whole key is um, to do a cart exchange. And the, uh, the material handler driving the tugger will drop, will pick up an empty cart and drop off a full cart and roll that into place. Um, the, the advantage of the tugger delivery, it really comes down to, oh, there's lots. Uh, productivity, 
instead of uh, only pulling one, like when, you, when you're operating with a fork truck, you're only taking one container. When we're doing a cart delivery, we can pull three, four, five, or six, or as many as you can fit into the system. So the operator's getting a lot more done for each travel route. Um, as we all know, fork trucks are big and heavy and bulky and dangerous. And I think about 100 people a day in America get hit by a fork truck. Whereas there's virtually, and, the, and, and some of them uh, accidents are, are, are horrific. And you're better off because the, the Tugger system, not only is it more um, safe, more productive, but it's also more flexible. Um, the cart delivery, there's, there's lots of reasons. Uh, uh, it makes it much, much better than a fork truck delivery system. Now the cart uh, is the thing that you supply, but you don't actually supply the tugger system, uh, sorry, vehicle. There could be different types of vehicles that the company uses, the, um, the, you know, the other company uses. As you say, some of it might be, uh, sometimes it might be an automated uh, guided vehicle, or maybe even an autonomous mobile robot actually, uh, which is slightly different from an AGV. What do you see the trends in that area? I mean, you supply cars, you probably see quite a lot of different types of tuggers and vehicles being used to pull your carts along. But what have you noticed any trends over the last few years? And maybe can you, you know, you, you can maybe project forward and see, uh, give us your opinion on, on what you think might change in that respect. Well, it's funny you would bring that up because um, in the last year, a year and a half, the uh, automatic guided vehicle, the vision guided vehicle have become much, much, much more popular. Uh, we've done, we're doing, a, we've drawn a number of them right now. Now the, there, there's a number of, uh, as well as there's a number of excellent Tugger manufacturers. There's also an excellent number of vision guided or automatic guided vehicles. Uh, the, the, the thing that's helping us is, um, the automatic guided vehicles are getting much more sophisticated. They're getting easier to operate. Uh, they're getting easier to program. And um, the controls on our carts have gotten simpler. In the beginning, the automatic controls uh, where there'd be a PLC, uh, actually a computer on a cart, talking to the computer on the AGV or talking to the computer at the workstation, which is that the, the, uh, the seems to be the latest trend. Um, is becoming more popular. I think in the last three years, we have made it quoted five jobs. We're actually quoting three or four jobs a month right now. So um, the, there must be, um, I, I'm, from my standpoint, my perception is the, there must be uh, tremendous cost savings for the large manufacturers who are going to the automatic guided delivery system. And uh, now that the equipment is, so reliable and I think it's more affordable and uh, certainly easier to set up and program and operate. I think you're gonna see more and more of that. We've uh, recently developed our own line of uh, uh, powered conveyors that we actually built here at Topper now. And we've, we've actually opened up our own controls department because the demand has gotten so high and we think it's, it's gonna be a big part of the future. Yeah, I think the conveyor uh, is, I think, the kind of almost central uh, competition or debate is between conveyors and sort of mobile systems, whether it's AGVs or AMRs. Uh, but conveyors still will have their place. What is this uh, powered belt conveyor that you're talking about? I'm looking at the picture of it, but uh, tell us, elaborate on that a little bit, because I, I don't know much about uh, this, I've seen conveyors, but I don't know much about them. What is this one? Years ago, when power conveyors on carts started to become in demand, we would use an old fashioned large electric motor with a gearbox and a bunch of chains. Uh, over the last three or four years, that's been eliminated. Now, if you have a very, very dirty operation or very heavy, we still prefer the chains. But in most applications being 2,500 pounds or less, which covers almost everything. We've gone to a, a power roller where the motor is inside a roller. It's very compact. There's a set of planetary gears. They're very powerful. 
They're very reliable and they take very little electricity to run so that when you're being pulled by an automatic guided vehicle with a battery, you're, you're hardly affecting the battery life of the, of the AGV because we steal our power off of that. And in the process of doing that, um, the, the units have become much more compact, much lighter, and uh, yet they're still very powerful. They're very effective. Um, the design is, is relatively new. Um, we actually build them here ourselves. Of course, we buy the power roller, but the rest of the conveyor is built here, and all the controls are done here now. We build our own panels, and uh, we buy sensors, and, and the building seems as a complete turnkey, including installation for the customer. But um, it's a much better system, and uh, the nice thing about controls today, um, depending what the customer they want, each one of those powered roller conveyors come with their own little, they call it a driver card. It's a, uh, it's a, a device that you can control the speed of the conveyor, you can control the startup and slow down of the conveyor, all by programming, making it extremely uh, versatile and easy to use. Um, many times when you install a system that with a customer that's got an existing set of conveyors, we have to match the speed of their conveyor at 30 feet a minute, 40 feet a minute, 50 feet a minute, whatever it is. The car can go in and can be adjusted there in a spot in minutes, and that works out really well. I've also noticed the page where you're talking about your lifts and tilts. Uh, I think I probably worked on something similar where, when I worked in a warehouse uh, just briefly for a few days, really, where you put things on a lift, uh, and a hydraulic lift, I think it was, uh, maybe not hydraulic, a, a, a powered lift anyway, and it uh, lifts it to the level of the truck and you push the um, goods from the lift uh, platform to into the truck or vice versa the other way around is that the sort of thing it is and and uh, uh, the tilting one what's that for the, the, what kind of uh, application would that have the 30 degree mechanical tilter and things like that what, what how is well, that used? i'm glad you asked that because whether it's a uh, we'll talk about the tilt station um when we tilt a cart and it's horizontal it's full of parts by tilting it at 30 or 45 degrees towards the operator makes it very easy to reach in and grab whatever part may be in that container. Now, that tilt feature can be manual, and we normally tilt about the center of gravity so it's very, very light and easy, or we can power it with pneumatics or, or, or hydraulics, depending what the customer wants. And many times the power aspect is controlled by the weight of whatever you're tilting or lifting. Uh, air, air has limitations. Hydraulic is very powerful and very, very steady air is a little bouncier, but um, the, 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 the main advantage and the, uh, the most important advantage of, of a tilt or a rotation or any of the carts is to get the part that the operator is trying to get out and hopefully attach on the semi line easy to reach or easy to grab. It comes down to ergonomics and it's like having a work cell with a lift table, but you're on wheels. So you get the benefit of all the features, but, and the container's already loaded on it. And um, there's so many things that when, if you were to compare a fork truck delivering a part to an assembly line versus delivering that part on a cart, it's ready to go instantly. So um, I hope that answers your question about the tilting. It's, it's probably the most important uh, design aspect of the carts. If you if you were to look at all of them, it's 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 really a, a good feature. Yeah, it interests me that things that you know I'm fairly new to the uh, this subject, uh, so it interests me that whereas conveyors seem the things the technologies that seem fairly straightforward and simple actually turn out to have quite a lot of sophisticated uh, components in them. Whether you're talking about conveyors, I never really thought about it that much, but they, they have quite a lot of sophisticated things inside them. Uh, and you know, with the carts, obviously carts, uh, there are simple ones that have no even electronics uh, or anything inside them, but you're talking about things that tilt a certain number of degrees and things like that. It's quite a lot of innovation and technology in what m might have first appeared to be quite simple um, things. 
Uh, how do you decide uh, which ones to concentrate on, which ones to innovate, which ones to develop, which ones to spend time and resources in, you know, giving features like the 30 degree uh, tilt? What drives you, what, what makes it uh, viable or worth doing? You know, do customers ask for it or do you decide, well, let's, you know, add this feature um, because we feel like it's going to be, or we observe like uh, it's going to be uh, a good thing? Or, or do you wait until somebody puts some money down and say, look, here's a little bit of money, could you develop this feature or that feature and incorporate into this, uh, this product or that product? Well, actually, all the above. Um, as you can imagine, all customers have similar type challenges. And of course, we listen to them and based on the customer's needs and priority, uh, a lot of times the emphasis is put on specific priorities that the customer puts. About half the time we are developing our own product line, 99% uh, of what we build is our, is our design. We have many patents um, that hopefully will protect us from people copying us, but um, it's a combination of everything you said, and it changes from day to day, but uh, we have a very healthy R&D department that is working on new concepts of ideas, uh, basically revolving around defying gravity, defying fiction, defying um, power. We, uh, we love gravity. We try to use it as much as we can as a power source. It's free and it's, uh, and it's very predictable. Um, but when, when, when pushed against the wall and there's no way you can do it without an, a power adder, you certainly will, will incorporate that. But it really comes down to ultimately what the customer wants. And the products that we develop from scratch and we have on the shelf when we need them is because of the similar problems that people have um, experienced in their operation. And we're always looking for ways to solve problems. Yeah, you've been very successful uh, uh, at, uh, at that as well. I, I guess you're still a private company, so you don't release many figures or data about uh, your successes in some ways. I do appreciate you said that you're now number, uh, you know, you, you number about 100 uh, employees. So that gives us an idea of the size of the company. But you can you give us some other numbers which can help us uh, gauge the type of uh, size of the of the business at all. Well, um, we've been in business 24 years, I think now. <laughs> um, I'm pleased to say that uh, I think we our customer base is is probably one of my 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 most proud accomplishments, and that. Uh, I can't think of a customer that once we've established a base of operation, we've uh, ever, I don't think we've ever failed anybody. I won't say that our first shot at a project was perfect and we had to do some redesign, but I can honestly say we've never left the project till the customer is happy. Um, we probably do have on our, we have over a thousand active customers and I think we have three to 350 of the Fortune 500 as customers. And uh, I know you warned me to be careful about names you say, I wish I could tell you, because uh, pretty much, uh, I didn't say this, and I, I wish I'd been more prepared because I could have thought better. Every automotive manufacturer in, uh, in America, including Canada and uh, Mexico, we have vendor numbers and we supply, uh, we supply equipment for uh, everyone. And we're really proud of the fact that uh, we've become so well uh, acquainted and uh, supported by the automotive business. And it's just been good for us as we spill in and everything else. Um, we, automotive is not our largest customer base anymore. Uh, it's become agricultural. But automotive is a major, major, major customer of, of the cart business. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, in very interesting change, uh, if it is a change. So, when when did uh, the agricultural overtake the automotive? If, if that happened, I mean, uh, you made it sound like it, you, the automotive used to be and still is important to you, but agriculture has kind of overtaken. Is that is that what happened, or 
automotive. Well, automotive was probably the largest target for cart delivery because they were such a large uh, group and, and they were in such big need. Um, what happened is when the recession hit in 2009 and General Motors and Chrysler went bankrupt, um, it, it forced us to think about other industries. And of course, in the process, um, we always knew that carts could be useful in any direction, but um, there is as much need for cart uh, delivery uh, in every, I don't care if it's an airplane, a motorcycle, a refrigerator, a TV, and every one I've mentioned, we supply carts to those people. And automotive just, uh, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful uh, business. I enjoy it immensely, but it's not the only one out there. There's many others that uh, have a big need for carts as well. Yeah, the agricultural sector interests me quite a lot because there's a lot of um, robotic, uh, robotics and automation technologies being introduced in the sector. Uh, whether you're talking about automated pickers of, of individual fruits like strawberries and I don't know, all kinds of soft fruit, I suppose. It's a very, very interesting field and those kind of things, I suppose, will need some sort of cart uh, to take. But one, once the machine that picks the fruit has uh, you know, picked enough of them to fill one cart, that cart might be I don't know, driven away somehow by something. Uh, right. while, it, while the machine carries on picking things. I can just see so many different things being developed for that industry uh, to essentially replace a lot of the human labor, which is difficult to find, probably politically problematic or something. Sure. Uh, and inefficient, essentially, probably not as efficient as machinery. So it'd be interesting to see how that sector develops. Um, how do you see your company developing uh, in terms of Maybe, uh, you know, are you branching out into different areas? I mean, the conveyors uh, are obviously kind of different from carts. And you do have a quite a lot of, looking at your website, you have a quite a lot of different types of carts. Sure. Um, and uh, containers and pallets and conveyors. It's quite, altogether, it's quite a large uh, range of products. Um, but I suppose conveyors is probably, you got, you know, two categories underneath there. Within those two categories, there are probably different sure. types of conveyors. Where do you, where do you you know how do you see you pro yourself progressing? Are you going to release more products? Or are you going to consolidate and cut down the products? How do you how do you see yourself uh, in the next few years? Well, I, I I think we're going to continue to expand uh, product line. Uh, some of the items you just mentioned that we've started to do in the last couple of years. We're actually doing a lot of cart delivery to a robotic station where the carts are unloaded or unloaded robotically, and that's both with uh, a human driver as well as an AGV. As I mentioned earlier, we develop our own line of power conveyors because we think that's going to be an exciting part of the future. Um, there's still lots and lots of even major corporations that are just getting into the cart delivery, and uh, I wish I could mention names, but some of the largest corporations in America are just actually uh, seeing the benefit. I don't care if it's productivity, safety, efficiency, flexibility, um, any one of those, um, I, I see the return on investment being more than worthwhile, even if it's just in safety in that we think the cart business is going to continue to grow for quite a while, and uh, uh, we're expanding. We're adding additional salespeople and marketing. Uh, we think that the future is good in carts, and uh, I would say that even though, as I mentioned, every company has a unique application, I would say that we invent one to two new carts every week for a customer that we've had for years, because once you start using carts and you see the benefit, the flexibility of it, it just, it makes people think differently. And a lot of the good ideas for interjecting cart delivery actually comes from the floor in factories where the people that are using them have an idea. And uh, it's fun to be a part of when you've created a solution 
on a job that was not very easy is now very easy. Uh, you become a, uh, a rock star in that plant and people hug you and you come in to see how the project's coming along. So uh, we think there's a good future in carts. Yeah, when you say that, it makes me wonder what the alternative to carts is. I can't think of what, you know, what would people do without a cart? You need carts to take things from A to B, but clearly, obviously, the way you're talking, there must be other ways of doing it. Otherwise, um, you know, they, they, what is the alternative to carts? When, at what point did they decide that, all right, this way, maybe we should think about carts and inquire about carts and that's probably when they contact you but what are they doing beforehand what are the examples of how they're solving whatever sort of material handling problem or, or issue they have before carts come along well for the first hundred years in, in, in even when henry ford started out assembly lines fork trucks delivered product to the assembly line and they did that oh for 70 years it wasn't until maybe that, and, and you know, the thing is, America seems to lag behind Europe. I think Europe was delivering product to assembly lines or work cells for 20 years before America said, hey, there must be some really good advantage. Why would they want to use cart delivery over, over fork trucks? Because um, when you visit a plant and they're only used to fork trucks, they actually have a negative response while pushing a cart around thinking it's, it's hard or it's more, more, more complicated or more work than they think. Um, I've had the good fortune to convert well over 100 companies to cart delivery from Ford trucks and have never had a negative reaction when the job was done. When we walked in, uh, people sometimes were negative toward the carts when management had seen the benefit of the carts and we had to convince the plant that their, their, their jobs would be easier, better, and the company will make more money and they'll be safer. And there's a lot of reasons besides just money and the future's better. So um, I, 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 I don't know why we like behind Europe so well, but um, we have purchased product from Europe years and years ago to see how the European people were building it. Of course, we weren't happy with it. And uh, I can't tell you who they were, they'll beat me up. But um, we've improved on it, we think. And uh, we, we, I don't know if there's a better alternative to uh, carts in the real world, maybe uh, down the road 100 years from now when they have some anti-gravity thing or something. But <laughs> in dealing with what we do, um, I think carts are, 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 the, are by far the best solution to make deliveries to an assembly line. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your time and, and for your uh, very clear and, and explanatory answers. Uh, great well, great insights you. there into an interesting uh, business. Uh, what's, uh, is there anything that I should have asked uh, that you want to say? Is there anything you want to add? No, I thank you for letting me uh, share my ideas with you, but um, um, all I can think of is, and, and, and I've done this now for about 20 years, is that um, the car delivery system is more productive, the car delivery system is safer, it's a lot more flexible. It's, um, you know, they have a saying in, in the lean, the getting the right part to the right place at the right time and the right quantity, it's considerably easier to do that with a car delivery system than a single delivery for truck delivery system. Thank you very much. Send us an email at sales at roboticsandautomationnews.com to register for one of our many upcoming webinars. And if you'd like us to host your webinar, we have a range of options, including long-term lead generation packages and marketing campaigns. We look forward to hearing from you soon.